Welcome to another episode of the Analysis Show with your one and only Thanasis Ateto Kumbo. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been amazing. Thank you guys for supporting. Like, share, comment, subscribe to the show. Like, you guys keep the show going. And today, we're going to have another one, a special one today. But before we start with the show and our guest and the interview you guys are going to see, we want to say, give a good thank you. First of all, I want to thank my co-host, Tony. Is that the first ever intro you've given yourself in the voice you practice in? I've been practicing. I think that's the first time you've ever yeah, announced I've been, your I've been own using name that my, way. My, <laughs> he does, my he radio does, voice. does three days of live radio, and now he's got the radio voice. Yeah, I'm on. going with the radio voice. Uh, but before we started, we got to give a huge thank you to our sponsors. The Analysis Show presented by Gruber Law. One call, that's all. One call, that's all. Uh, Car Blizz, our friends in Car Blizz have been amazing. Potawatomi Casino, you guys are incredible. You guys have been with us from the beginning of the, of the show, the seasons. And let's get it. Let's get the show rolling. Come on, Tony. All right. I want to start off. We're, you know, we're gonna, we'll announce our guests for this episode in a second here. But a couple nights ago in the NBA, I was watching the Nuggets play the Timberwolves. Okay. And I wanted to ask you about this. So Christian Brown drives yes. down center of the lane, two-hand punches out on Rudy, defensive player of the year. I like Rudy. I think he's a good defensive player. Yeah. He gets dunked on. Yeah. Then he tries to fight Christian Brown because he was so upset he got dunked on. So my question to you, when you go back and you look at, remember when he, he and Draymond got into it? Yeah. It might not have been Draymond's fault now, right? No, 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 okay, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. So if you watch the play, because I, I know exactly what you're mm-hmm. talking about, watch the play, I think see, Chris, 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 Christian Brown, Christian Brown, he, he screams in the beginning, he's looking at him mm-hmm. and then looks away, then he looks away. So, yeah. Now, obviously, I don't know about the whole, like, MMA grabbing thing, like, just, like, trying to tussle and stuff like that. But he did look at him. He didn't do it with oh, no he reason. Him down. That's For what sure. I'm trying to say. Sure. Now, it was entertaining. Mm-hmm. Not good. I mean, kids out there, so you don't really want to really fight, fist fight. You really don't want to fist fight. But, you know, always, always chirp is always nice to, you care. You want to mm-hmm. win, you know? For sure. But Minnesota won. That was the crazy part. Like, right? And then Rudy goes and knocks down, too. So yeah, that, like 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 that's tough to that's me. A great basketball game. Yeah, a great, great basketball, basketball game. game. But yeah, that was entertaining. Yeah, I was obviously just kidding a little <laughs> bit. It might not have been Draymond's fault. I'm just saying, Rudy's been at the center of a few of these now. You know, it's, we're men. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. it's, uh, <laughs> it's basketball. We you get a little bit of temper, you get a little bit of emotion involved if you care, if you care about the sport always. Um, but um, man, we see plays like that all the time. You know, for especially for the guys who play, like it's. Maybe not today. You know, for fans, it's different. They're like, oh, look what happened. But for us, bro. Denver looks tough, though. I know they lost, but Denver yeah. looks good. Minnesota looks good. The Western Conference. Really good, man. Just sticking in the West real quick. So our second one here. Uh, has anyone in the Western Conference uh, surprised you early on this season? Not even surprised. Let's say just impressed. Because I feel like there's a few teams that the West looks really good. Really good. Phoenix. Moving the ball crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh... I thought the Lakers, honestly. Like, Lakers, I know people yes. kind of like look yeah, no, at them no, as that's gonna be. I, I just didn't want to say that. Because you know what happens with the media and podcasting? They go straight to the Lakers, Celtics. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are going to talk about teams and just mm-hmm. kind of dissect really basketball. Like, I think those teams, you know, like, um, I mean, I'm just like really focused on like the Easter Conference. Like, I haven't really watched. I don't want to, okay. you know, I don't want to say anything. I didn't really haven't watched like. Dissected every every game, but those teams are. So I've watched I, I, and Dallas obviously. Ma- yeah, as yeah, maybe definitely. to the time that they're on, I've watched. I feel like a lot of Western Conference. Yeah. The Lakers when they're healthy are good. Oklahoma City is the real deal. Minnesota's good. Denver's good. Dallas is good. Like the West is solid. as they were last year. Their playoffs solid. were super entertaining. It's very very yeah. solid. Yeah. Kind of watched a little bit of the end of OKC against against Portland. I mean mm-hmm. Portland kind of got down early, but um, not really. I mean towards the middle, but yeah. The uh, the duo too, and this doesn't. This is one of the things with the duo of Chris Paul and Wemby. So yeah. far, I think it's been solid. I think people are expecting okay. it to be I mean, amazing I don't know what right off the bat. Now, like you, you're, you're you're expecting Chris Paul to play with Wemby, which is great, and mm-hmm. I think it's great for the for the basketball and the way they want to they want to dissect the game and play the game. But to be honest with you, do you want baby? Do you want Wemby to have the ball in his hands? You want that, right? Mm-hmm. But then you know you get Chris, so that then now they got to f- they figure it out. This you know Wemby's not a the other Jordan, a Blake Griffin, a, a guy who's just yeah, it's not all. Lob City all over. No, again. but no, he's, he's he, he is Lob City. He can dunk it from anywhere. What I'm saying is, if you understand the game of basketball, you understand that he's not just a player who just skins and rolls. Mm-hmm. 
He's going to have the ball in his hands. Well, that's why it looks different because he, he can, you're right, he can dunk it from anywhere, but he also, he, we'll he's, he's, he's different than those guys. Exactly. Like he can, he, he can set a pick and pop out. He can do yeah. many different things. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to me, which actually I was just setting you up there, which brings me to our third question here oh. of the four quarters presented by Carbless Premium Ready to Drink Cocktails. How in your you've been around basketball, you know this game. Yeah. I've said this on the pod. You know how to dissect and break down this game better than most. How long does it truly take? So a duo like Chris Paul and Wemby, right? Yes. They haven't played much together, but like yeah, Paul George and Embiid, like there's these duos. Uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum took yeah. a little bit of time. How long do you really think it takes for duos like that to start to gel to the level that people expect them to? Uh, I think I think it's three factors to it. One is the effort. How much effort each one of them wants to put mm. to, to make this happen. Second is the system, the scheme. The no system and scheme is kind of different, but those both those two things, right? And then the third has to do with uh, the style of, of play of each other. So like if they're both ball dominant, then that means they got a, somebody else, third guy or fourth guy has to sacrifice for those two to be happy. If they're not ball dominant and they just kind of play off each other, it's easier. It always gets easier. So. And then the last question. And how long? I mean, to answer your question mm -hmm. about how long. I guess with those depends. factors, it, 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 it depends. depends. Yeah. It depends. It could go from six months to one year to two years. Depends. Yeah. To, you, what, I, what was it with the Celtics? Four or five? I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the Celtics, like the 08 Celtics, they won their title their first year and they gelled immediately. No, I'm talking about like oh, JT Jaylen, and Jalen Brown. I feel it, like they took three or four seasons before they were really. Of course you did. But they were young. And, and they were both they, great. They, they were young. They were too, 18, so. 19. So, yeah. like, it makes, it makes sense. Um, I say that to. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time yeah, it does. for duos or trios or whatever to start to gel, to make an impact. It's early on in the season. Um, we're going to do a special four quarters here. I got two more questions for go, you. Go, go. We can, we can turn this to a solo podcast. It's okay. What are, what are these sunglasses you, you, you've brought to the podcast today? Oh, so listen to this. Whenever Tony's going to ask me about an NFL question or a football question, I'm always going to put this on. So I'll give you the NFL vibe, <laughs> so you understand. Like I'm in business. So, so NFL question, we're Go. putting on the shades. Yeah, putting on the shades. That's the only way I answer NFL questions. So now that you, so we're gonna stick with that. Now that you are an NFL fan, you've been yeah. watching games this year. Uh, you did some live predictions mm -hmm. when you joined us on the radio. Uh, do you have uh, a favorite player that you've been watching or that you've met or uh, or, or whatever throughout uh, throughout your NFL fanhood this season? I mean, there's always, you know, I always like guys like DK Metcalf, kind of mm -hmm. all the, like, the kind of bigger guys, kind of like more aggressive, because I'm a physical type of player yeah. too, like the, the way I, I like, but man, just watching the, the game, I always love guys like cornerbacks, you know, I, I like the, the, the one-on-one to the me. The one-on-one -on -one like, physical, okay. It's like, you know, uh, and obviously safety too, like, you know, Earl Thomas was type of like, kind of like having a cool squad together and just like. Take it's off. funny you say that because when you said you like the physical one on one yeah. corner, I was going to say back in, they were at their peak from like 2014 to probably 2019, but the Seahawks had, we were two where DK Metcalf Which is crazy. plays now. Yeah, then I said, uh, and most of them play actually DK and the other guys and, and like Richard and like oh, most of them play. I was say, you would have loved Richard Sherman. <laughs> you would have loved Richard Sherman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was one of the most physical corners out there and he's a bigger dude i think he's like six two six three and for corners yes. i know for your league like that's tiny no no but it's it's he's it's a big that. corner yeah um uh, wisconsin fans jordan love is on the list of his favorite players of just course that, yeah. <laughs> no I'm, but they're gonna be like all the time like oh you always talk about milwaukee you're talking mm. about wisconsin you know on the pot so all right and the final question today it's not an nfl question oh, so the sunglasses you. can be removed there's a box to your right from Candy Fun, oh, House. Yeah, yeah, Candy Fun House. So we did this for the first time ever with Christian Yelich when we had him nice. on this very set right here. Candy Fun House sent us a box of different candies that you can get from them. Um, some of them are international. Some of them are just different flavors that aren't even yeah. on the market yet. Uh, open that up and see if anything in there looks appealing. I want. I want to see. I want to see what we got in this box. Okay. So one of the things we're gonna do is TA kind of goes through the box here, <laughs> is offer guests some of the candy. That we Ooh. have here. Oh, that's true. What do we got? Can candy kittens. Candy kittens. All right. Sour Patch Scorching Straws. So they're hot Sour Patch Kids? Yes. Have you tried one of those yet? Yeah, I think, I, I, we, I think we tried with some of those in, uh, in a family event, something like that. All right. What else we got? 
A little nitro. That's the one I want to see. Can I see? Can you pass that? Yeah. Over? What is this? What is that? This is labeled Lil Nitro, the world's hottest gummy bear. It says this product is extremely spicy and has the potential to cause skin and or mouth irritation. Consume it at your own risk. You yeah. want to try it? No, no. We'll not be doing that on this You're not show. doing this one? No, I'm not doing that one. You can try it. I guess should, you- should we? Tony. We- mm. Tony, we have, we have 20 more minutes of the show, Tony. All right, <laughs> we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it at some point. You can hold me to it. At some yes. point when we're recording, I yes. will do it. We have 20 more minutes. We can, we, right. we can try it at the end of the show. At the end of the show? All right, yes. that makes Come sense. On. All right, that wraps up our four-quarter segment today, but TA has to tell you about our guest uh, coming up who is – I've known him for years. NBA fans have been covering his or following his work for years. One of the best reporters in NBA history. Reporters, I'm analysts, scouts. It. You can call him whatever you want to call him. My guy, Brian Windhorst. You're going to love this interview. If you love basketball, if you love sports, if you love the history of sports, if you like great stories, if you like great comeback stories, you're going to love Brian Whithorst. And and that interview that I had with him, please enjoy. See you in a little bit. Welcome to another episode of the Analysis Show, which you want to know, Ethan S. Santa Tocumpo, presented by Gruber Law, Car Bliss, and for the Watermill Hotels and Casino. Thank you guys so much for supporting, for liking, sharing the show. You guys have been amazing. But you know, today I have I have a great, 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 great person today. And we're going to talk so much basketball, so much uh, about the sports. And uh, a little bit of the US, U.S. and the world in general. But you know, I got to give him the intro. Brian Winho. You have your voice, you know, you've got the wrong, you've got a good voice. You picked the wrong sport. You picked the wrong profession, I think. So, wait, I have seen, first of all, I want to say one thing. You know, I want to say the story before we start the, the podcast. I'm in the, during the Olympics. I don't even know if you knew it was me. You're in a bridge above the river and you're doing uh, the show and yeah, you're. Yeah. And I'm with the with the with the bicycle that I go through, and I see you. And whenever I see somebody I've seen so much in the states, and I see them overseas, I always like, like, oh, hey, hey Brian, and I, and I yell. I don't know if you remember. And you're like, you have the, you have the mic, and you're like, this guy yelling yeah, <laughs> with, with the bike. I that's right by the arena. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> there was a, there was a lot of stuff going on in Paris. It was all good, but there was a lot of distractions happening. So. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't. I should have invited you over and brought you on. That would no, be no, 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 no. I just, I just wanted to say hi because uh, it's always nice to see you guys out there and uh, and to kind of see you guys in our, uh, you know, in our element. Like this is where from. You know, me, me, the, and the family. We usually, when the season's done, we go back home and enjoy. Yes, but I've seen you overseas many, many times. You haven't always known it, but in 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 Abu Dhabi, in the Philippines, you know, I was watching. Yes. Your games, you know, Greece playing the U.S. in the World Cup last summer. I guess two summers uh, ago now. You okay. played in that game. So, wait. This is what I want to ask you. How long have you been going to FIBA games? Since My when? first FIBA experience was in 2006 in Japan. In Japan? The World Championships, which was the famous moment for all of Greek basketball when the Greeks beat the Americans <laughs> yes. in... Uh, you were just a small <laughs> kid, but the Greeks beat the Americans in the semifinals. Amazing! This is this yeah. is one of the reasons we started playing basketball. By the way, really? Yeah, a lot of Greeks. What we after that moment it was like basketball was like uh, we wanted to make basketball our number one sport. You know, everybody loves football and soccer yeah. like back home, but like we wanted to make basketball our number one sport. And watching, you know, we call baby Shaq like Sophocles, Papalukas, Sophocles, <laughs> Theo Papalukas, yes, yes. Vasilius Spanoulis. Worked those Americans <laughs> over. Shot like I don't know. I don't know what they ended up shooting, but they shot like sixty-five percent. LeBron was shell shocked. Couldn't do anything. Chris Paul was shell shocked. Papa Lucas was a six foot. So he was like probably I don't know. In my memory, he was like thirty-five. He might have been younger. Yeah. He was like you know, gray, literally gray beard. You know, mm-hmm. you know, Chris Paul. He just worked Chris Paul over. Just you- worked him over. <laughs> Shashevsky is over there coaching. He can't. He can't stop. He doesn't know the players' names. He's like, what about number seven? What about number 11? And number seven was Theo Papalukas, who was working the Americans over. And um, 
Yeah, I, have, I was there 2006. I was young. I was in my 20s, but I was there. You, you know what's so funny, too, is that... Uh, so the way we... So this this is our version of the story, right? Our version of the story was that uh, Team USA came into play, and Team USA was so much uh, based on uh, the one-on-ones, the athleticism, the run-and-gun, called run-and-gun, the phase transition, yeah, yeah, yeah. fast break, etc. And that's when the whole... Basketball was was changing towards pick and roll, yeah. And Greece, this is not over exaggeration. I'll tell you, like it's three schools of European, three schools, right? It's the first the school of Spain, up and down, boom, 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 threes on the offense, chances on offense, threes, this, that. Then it's just Serbians who will shoot from the womb. They know how to shoot. That's they right. learn how to shoot. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then it's Greeks, pick and roll, pick and roller, pick and roll and post, and pick and roll and post, and pick and roll. Yes, sir. <laughs> Kicked the Americans' ass in pick and roll. So what happens that year, it was Krzyzewski's first year coaching the team. The Americans had lost in Athens. They bring in Krzyzewski. He's going to change everything, okay? LeBron's there. Carmelo's there. Dwayne Wade's there. Dwayne Wade has just won the Olympic, I mean, the uh, championship. Mm-hmm. And he, Krzyzewski puts Jim Beheim on his staff from Syracuse. Yes. Well, everybody knows he's the, this is the master of zone. Yes. In America... Who is the master of zone? Jim Beheim. He's played zone for 40 years at Syracuse. They put him on the staff. We thought, because he was going to have the Americans teach the Americans to play zone. And so the first day of practice in Las Vegas, we asked Mike Krzyzewski, are you going to play zone? And he says, anybody who knows anything about me knows I don't play zone. We were like, Jim Beheim is here. You know, because they made this big thing. We're going to respect the international game. You know, because they lost the 2002 yes. World, World Cup in Indianapolis, embarrassed, finished sixth place, lose the, lost, I think, twice in, maybe even three times in Athens, you know, get the bronze medal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now USA Basketball is going to fix their problems. We're going to respect the international game. And Krzyzewski, great coach. Nobody doubts that. But he goes, anybody who knows knows I don't play zone. Like, huh. I don't know if they respect that international game. So... Everything's going fine. They get to play the Greeks. The Greeks have big guards. Big guards. Everybody. Yamadid is big guard. Papa Lucas big guard. Spanul is big guard. Nikos is big guard. All, all the guards were like uh, six fours and above. Right. All of them. The Americans have small guards. They got Chris Paul and they got Kirk Heinrich for their two point oh, guards. Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes. Thanasis, baby Shaq was coming out. And leveling those Americans <laughs> with screens. And they, seriously, they just ran one play over and over and over. And, they, and, and over. they couldn't stop it. And so the, what, what needed to happen, the U.S. needed to play zone. Because yes. they couldn't handle man-to-man because they couldn't handle the pick and roll. But they didn't practice zone. They, didn't, they weren't ready to play zone. I got a question. Was, was Dwight on that team too? I don't think so. No, huh? You know Who what, was their bigs? Who were their bigs? Uh, Brad Miller was on the team. That yeah. was an interesting decision. Can you, can you check that, Tony, when you get a chance? Um, uh, trying. To, oh, Chris Bosh was on the team. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like thinking like, okay, who is your, your zone anchor? Because always in a zone, you need a big body in the yeah. middle. Who's yeah. your? It's a very good question. I don't remember exactly, but I will tell you this. So the next year, the Americans had to play in the tournament in Las Vegas to qualify for the Olympics because yes. they didn't qualify for the Olympics. They got to get to Beijing, so they got to play in this Olympics. They were supposed to play that tournament in Venezuela. As soon as they lost. In Japan, they're like, no, no, it ain't going to be in Venezuela. It's going to be in Las Vegas. They yanked it out of Venezuela. First game, first possession, they were, they were playing zone defense. Zone defense. Because they knew. But I'm going to tell you, you're talking about the Serbians and, and all that and the Spanish. Back then, the kings of the world were the, Argent, the Argentines. Argentina, yeah. They played this incredible style of basketball. Now, this is the golden generation. This is Manu Ginobili, Fabricio Alberto, Luis Scola, Carlos Delfino. Andres, Andres was doing Andres Nocioni. Like all these NBA players, yes. okay? So they are the Olympic champions. They hadn't lost like in like several years. So it is the semifinals. The Americans are playing the Greeks in one semifinals. Spain is playing against Argentina in the other semifinal. The our Spain-Argentina game is first. The Americans and Greeks are sitting there watching. Just like the NCAA tournament, you're sitting yeah. there watching. So it's down all the way to the last minute. The game is tied. With now, I, I, I am like 26 years old. This is my first FIBA international event. Okay, 
everything is different and new to me. You know, the, the trapezoid lane was still going on back yes. then. All right. So the game is tied. Spain has the ball. There is like 25 seconds left on the, in the, on the clock. And Argentina comes out, fouls, on purpose, fouls to put Spain on the line. Yes. And I'm like, it's a tie game. Why'd you foul? Yes. I'm like looking around to the people like who are sitting with the media and nobody's reacting. Nobody's like, I was like, this is, a, this is, a, this is an incredible, terrible uh, mental mistake. Well, was, yes. No, no, this is, <laughs> this is the European style. They will foul. I mean, even though Argentine, Argentine South America, but they play yeah. the European style, FIBA yeah. style. They wanted to mm -hmm. control their own destiny. Yes. So Spain, I don't remember who made it, probably like Rudy Fernandez or something, but two free throws. So now Argentina has the last possession. They call timeout. They set up a three to win, to win the game. Ball goes to Nocioni in the corner. He gets a clean shot off. No good. Spain wins. Spain is celebrating. Um, that game, uh, Pau Gasol broke his foot, by the way. Oof. So it was a bad loss for Spain, or a bad loss for Argentina without Pau Gasol. Yeah. So... The Argentinians are laying on the court, distraught, because now they are out. You know they can't win the gold, and I'm like, dudes, why did you foul? But like, I was the one because everybody, nobody thought it was crazy. It was just standard, you know, it's strategy. Different now, now it's kind of different. It's what you're saying, kind of now. It's becoming like a, it depends on the coach now. But yeah, before, man, that was crazy. It was always. If first of all, if you're up, you foul. It doesn't matter if it's twenty, if, especially twenty seconds. You always foul in Europe. But because you wanted two free throws or the ball. Yeah. But now it's kind of different. Now it, it's more personalized from coach to coach. Some coaches like, we're going to play defense. Or some coaches now, and you'll be like, hey, we want the ball. I don't care what they do because we still have to score. We're still going to have to score. I know, but I want to be clear. <laughs> the game was tied. This is not a three-point game and it's you fell. The it's game <laughs> was tied. I was like, what is going on? They just lost the game because they fouled in the tie game. But that was a learning experience for me. Yeah. And I got to see the great moment in, of, uh, of Greek basketball. So still, to this day, when I go back to the Olympics, the Greek media and stuff, I always talk about it because I think they appreciate that there's somebody who's still around who can tell you about yeah, the I, I definitely appreciate it. I have so many questions about that. Yeah. Too. So, okay, so you've been in every FIBA competition, right? Not every. I, I, almost, missed, almost. I missed some. But, yeah, I've been to the, the last five I've been to. Did, would you, did you, were you at the one we did? World Cup in, in uh, China? Oh, yes, sir. I have were, something to say you, about that game. Were, were you at the one that we, we we won, but we got disqualified? You know what happened? So we actually won, but got disqualified. We won by 10, but we were supposed to win by 11, and we got disqualified by Czech Republic because we lost from Brazil by one point at the... at the. Right. <laughs> well, there's a lot that went on in that. First off, if I was Giannis, I would never have played FIBA basketball again. <laughs> He had so many bad calls. The last game against Brazil, it was, it was, it was tough. he fouled out. And he just won the MVP. Yes. He is the best player in the world. He fouls out of this game on a charge that if this, they called a charge. Yeah. If this play had happened in the United States in an eliminate, because it was an elimination game, mm -hmm. um, there would have been a riot. And like, I honestly don't know how he kept his cool. The, the calls in that game were so bad. I was like, he's never because that happened with Duncan. Tim Duncan was yeah. like, forget this, I'm done playing these just ridiculous rules. Because you know, in the international game, it's so much easier to draw a charge. It's way easier. And but here's the thing: so the Greeks play the Americans the second to last game. Mm -hmm. Giannis is the MVP, unstoppable player, the best player in the tournament. The Americans have a good team, but not a great team. You know, yeah, like I think Donovan one of the Mitchell, younger guys, right? Donovan Mitchell, uh, Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum, you know, good players, but they were still kind of young. Yeah. It is like a 10-point game going to the fourth quarter. And the coach sits Giannis. Eight minutes to play, no Giannis. Seven minutes to play, no Giannis. I'm like, when is number 34 <laughs> going back on the floor? And never played him. And here's the thing about the Greek media. I like the Greek media. Because they ask tough questions. They are ruthless. They ask tough they questions are ruthless. to the American coaches. Like, if they're not even involved in the game, because they only allow the American media to ask so many questions. So, but then they'll go to Greek, someone from Greece, and Greece will ask a tough question. So I'm like, excuse me, my friends. What about Giannis? It's a 10-point game. It's not a 30-point game. It's a 10-point game. 
You can still win the game. You have Giannis. And the coach says, we had to save him for the next game because we, we have to beat Brazil by a certain amount of points. So we save him yeah, for Czech, Brazil. Czech, yeah, Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, or Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. And I go, excuse me, you have the number one player. Why don't play to win? Yes. Play to win the game. If you beat the U.S., it's a great win. Play, play to win. Great win. You play Giannis all the way to the end. The Greek media had no problem with it. They, 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 they didn't like. They're like, no, the coach is correct. Which I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? And of course, you know, Giannis is not talking to the media. He didn't talk to the media the entire time in China. He's like, I am he talking did, to these guys. He did. Okay, so you know, so crazy, right? That uh, you have to, you learn this like two or three years coming into professional sports because professional sports here is not like the like overseas like overseas it's not so much media like but the sport is so much built here the product through media and through everything so then you learn three years in like oh okay i do need to talk to media i do need to show who i am and you know they ask tough questions they ask the questions and it's okay you know it's part of the of the what comes with it but in greece it's so hard like now looking back in their heads if they knew it was not going to be Czech Republic by 12, where we need no 11 that we needed. They were like, let's beat Team USA. Let's beat Team USA, obviously. But number one player in the world. <laughs> right there. Play. Play him. But here's the thing: like, generally in Europe, generally, okay, yeah. they don't focus on money. At all. And like, for example, Greece has killer gear. The gear for their basketball team, awesome. First off, that gear should be on sale here. You should be able to buy Giannis. You can a little bit. But more stuff. I don't know. Giannis Greece jerseys are awesome. Uh, all Greece, just they're awesome. Yeah. The Greek jerseys are awesome. They're made by Nike. Yeah. It's not like it's made by some obscure mm -hmm. brand. They should get them. You can't get gear. You can't get gear. It's hard to get gear. You can't buy gear. Because they want to sell them. They don't sell them. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. Like, they don't do media because they don't, because they hate the media or whatever and they see it as an adversary. They don't understand that grows the game, which means more money. Like, you know, they like don't... Jokic. Jokic, he hadn't, he hadn't <laughs> talked to the media for like five years when it comes to the Serbian national team. I mean, he's very polite. Yeah. You know, we ask him and he just goes, Not today, my friends. And he just keeps <laughs> on walking. And, um, that's Nicola. That's him. The, the the coach, the Serbian coach, he does speak English, but he won't answer questions. He had no interest in like you know the Serbia and the U.S. played three games this summer, mm -hmm. and they had they played you know in the. I, I think I think it was the it was friendly friend no it was friendly group stage yeah and then the big one the big one the big one he no 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 questions in English <laughs> he's just not talking <laughs> like okay whatever I'm just saying like you know no questions brate, 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 you know brate, there's brate, a lot of English today, speaking brate. basketball fans who are interested in mm -hmm. what was going down but like. Money is not the factor. Money no. is not at first. I, which, which, uh, which is ultimately it's a bad thing though, right? Because that's what you you want to grow the business, and that's why the model of Euroleague is changing now. If you notice, it, it's, it's we're going to the salary cap, they're changing the teams, more teams. Uh, Middle East is coming into into play now. Dubai, yeah. BC, and you know who knows. So I, I think they have to start doing the media, but they'll have to have like, I feel like the way it's gonna happen is that, and obviously it's a hard thing to say, but I think like. I think ESPN should go and make a move and go like and say, hey, exclusively. And, and because what's going to happen then is going to make, I, I know you're traveling a lot already, but it's going to. Well, no, I mean, my thing is like the basketball in Europe is awesome. Yeah. But um, the business is bad. Yeah. You're going to make, no, they're going to make the, Brian and the guys go and travel, go to, go to the final of, of your league. Well, here's the problem. The problem is this, the money for NBA, for the money for new basketball investment is in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Which is complicated. I know you spent a lot, bunch of time there. You've yeah, been to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi did, several yep. times, right? Mm -hmm. With the Bucks and with Greece. Yeah, and with Greece and with the Bucks and business and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. The money is in the Middle East. They want to invest in basketball. The fan, but there's no fans in the Middle East. I mean, it's just not that much people. Yeah. The fans are in China. That's the biggest fan base in the world. But the basketball there is terrible. Yeah, Bad not. basketball fans, no basketball. Middle East, money, no fans. Yeah. Europe. Players, tons of basketball, <laughs> no money <laughs> for the teams. Because obviously, Europe has money yeah. for soccer, no teams, no teams. Or, or, uh, teams, but no, no money. No money. Wow. We have to come together. <laughs> yeah. We need, we need, we need the Chinese fans with the Middle Eastern money and the European players. 
in the NBA is where that's happening. Exactly. That's <laughs> Except really, for the that's Middle Eastern money. I, I, I like that. That's, that's great. Actually, the way you dissect it, it's, it's amazing, actually. Because I've been all over the world. I've been to China. I've been to Asia to see how they like, care about the fans in the Philippines. Yes. Crazy, right? Insane. Amazing. I, I was surprised. Like, I was talking with Bobby Portis about this because I would, I would look like hang out with Bobby a lot uh, during the, the two weeks. And it was so, so surprising. It was like, like, we couldn't get, like, if you go out, you would have to, it would be like a glass of people, like, like this yeah. whole window would be like, people just, oh, the Nash is Bobby, oh, like, packed. So to me, I see how much they love, and they're so polite. Like, yeah. you know. But like, like that's the thing, like, the, the Filipino fans are so f- big into fans that, like, not, like, obviously Bobby Portis goes anywhere in Milwaukee, he's known. But if Bobby yeah, Portis but- was in, but it's the NBA too. They I love know, the NBA. I too. know, but if Bobby Portis was in Idaho or whatever, you know, nobody would recognize him. But in in Manila, he can't go anywhere. Yeah. You can't go anywhere. They yeah. know everybody. <laughs> I remember they they would say our name and we're saying like they would go crazy in the same. Oh my yes, god! It's exactly. Crazy. So I do think all this like fan base they deserve to watch the games, and obviously it happens. With the NBA is doing a great job with the global games and trying yeah. to whatever you know whoever pays more or whatever the case might be yeah. you go out there but okay apart from all this I have another question for you okay obviously how come you didn't get Woz's job which is you You can ask if you want to you don't yeah, have to I, I don't care <laughs> I don't want that job man why I don't want that job because I don't want to have my phone like first off like today Today was a very busy day in the NBA. Won't say. <laughs> don't say. Don't say. Don't. It won't be. Won't say why. But it's just, I was on the phone all day today. I don't need. I'd rather talk up to the teams about why they're doing something, what they're thinking about doing, stuff like that. Because to me, the actual transaction is less interesting than the why and what's leading up to it and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. You know, like you and I were talking earlier, like about contracts yeah. and. You know, the difference between a three-year contract and a four-year contract, and what about a five-year contract? And sometimes a three-year with an opt-out can be more valuable than a five-year contract and all that kind of stuff. And the moves and the team building, like that stuff is more interesting to me. And quite frankly, at ESPN, we got to fill thousands of hours of content. And it's not just about the transaction. It's about everything that's going in, in and around it. So I'm just more interested in that. And I don't want to have to you know, fight like crazy to find out the actual transaction. I'd rather know the whole thing. So ah. I didn't have any interest. In being inside that. So, okay. I mean, but to me, you're out inside that. Obviously. But see, it's kind of two different jobs. Like, it's kind of okay. like the difference between a point guard and a shooting guard. So, like, one job is to break the news. Right? Okay. That's a valuable job. Those guys get, you know, the point guard... Sorry, point guard in the NBA gets a lot of money. Yeah. Thirty million dollars these days. <laughs> then there's the insider. I mean, you can do both, obviously. Yeah. You can play point guard and shooting guard, but you gotta know what's going on in the league and you know, what's go you know, why teams are doing stuff, what it means, and you gotta be able to say, you know, here's the thing, like sometimes these sometimes there'll be a deal and the team or the agent is highly incentivized to present the deal in a certain way to say well this deal is done like this and or the team is to say hey we did this deal for like this and it's kind of the newsbreaker's job to say this is what the team is saying this is what the agent is saying okay it's my job to say that's bull oh the reason they did it was because of this 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 (laughs) and this Oh, yeah, they said it was this, but it's not. It's actually this, 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 and this. I like that more. I like that more. And I'd rather be able to say that's bull or that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, this deal was amazing. Look at this. Look at these seven little things that happened yeah. that made this possible. And because, I, you know, I, I piss agents off. Like, literally, right before we did this podcast, I was texting with one of the top five agents. Yeah. And I had said something three days ago that he was upset about. Okay. And he was like, this is wrong. And then something happened today and it was kind of, I was kind of right. And um, I was like, hey, I understand why you said that, but you know, I was kind of right. And he's like, I know you were. But you know, when they're in the thick of the battle, you know, yeah. they got to do what they got to do. 
and I got to do what I got to do. But I don't want to have to always be on their good side. Let me ask you another question then. What is, like for me, right? I I have a podcast and the, like the way I started is through the journey and just like interviewing people and understanding the culture here in the States and doing all these things. And now sometimes I have people text me like, hey, bro, do you want to, I'm doing this and this, right? And in my head, I'm like, I'm not really not a, you know, really not a source. You know what I mean? I'm not a, to say this. But what is the etiquette? What is the etiquette if you find something? Because for me, yeah. I'm still in the this side of, of the fence. And then I don't will never want to do the mistake that yeah. a lot of people make that they say, okay, I'm not a player anymore or I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not in contact with these people. Now I can just, you know, I can I, I know I know this happened. I can just say, what is what, what, how do you define the etiquette? I, which I understand, you know, what yeah. is your... Well, Definition you of gotta that. take care of number one. You gotta take care of yourself. You gotta do what's okay. good for yourself. Okay. Like I would never like if I came to you and said, "Hey, uh, is so and so, you know, how's how's his knee or whatever?" And you're like, "Man, I gotta take care of my team. I play for my team. I can." I would never put you in that position. Yeah, you right. know. Um, but like sometimes, like you know, the media can be helpful. You know, they can be like, "Hey, listen, this guy is absolutely getting screwed." Because of A, B, and C. I don't want to do specific examples yeah, yeah, because people yeah. start, but like, you know, and the media can kind of be like sort of an alternate option for the player, you know, or the oh, team. Oh, gotcha, But gotcha. so, you know, but I know, but here's the thing this is my 22nd year doing the NBA. I'm not quitting anytime soon. <laughs> Relationships over the course of time, no one story, especially if it's like, is this guy playing tonight on a sore ankle? Or, you know, is he going to sign? Like, you know, Sign. Is he going to agree to a contract? We're all going to know. Like, it's yeah. not, no one story is worth ruining a relationship. Exactly. No one Because, story. like, you know how many of these players, like at ESPN, do you know how many of these players I now work with at ESPN? You know, like, who, who finished their career? Like, you know, like, I don't, like, I, I, it's, a, it's, it's under, if I piss a player off and he's mad at me or a coach or whatever, it's fine if they're mad at me about something and they disagree with what I'm saying, but I don't, I want there to be a respect underneath, you know? And so mm. to me, it's, I, I try, you know, no one's ever going to, you know, there's certain guys who are just not any relationship in life. You're never, yeah. never going to bat a hundred, you know, you're never going to bat a thousand, but I would rather be respected as trying to do it right. And if you get something wrong, like I always say, if I get something wrong or I've wronged you and you're pissed off, say, tell, tell me, tell me, okay. Like it, let's, you know, you know let's, it. let's yeah. deal with it. Let's deal with it right now. You know, like um, during during te- during the Olympics, like there was a team USA. There was actually two team USA players that I said stuff on TV back here that pissed them off, and they were like, "Hey, you know, we were practice," and they were like, pulled me aside and said, "Hey, blah 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 blah," and I was like, "Well, blah 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 blah," and we had our say, and okay, we shake on it in the end. And maybe he's still pissed at me and whatever, or their pistol pissed at me, but like at least we talked about it. You know, at least we talked about it. You, okay. So listen, I had, very interesting. I had a sh- uh, show I did with uh, Stephen A. Stephen A actually came to Milwaukee. I want to bring you to Milwaukee one. I know you're uh, you're the West Coast. And... I, I love Milwaukee. Okay, good, good, yeah. good, good. So I want to bring you to Milwaukee. So the, it was very interesting because I was talking with him and you know, and then I kind of surprised Jan. Jan. Jan didn't know who was coming in. I oh my God, this. I I've got to hear this show. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Stephen A came in and walked in and shagged him. But what I realized is that it's like playing. You know, you might not like somebody's style of play, but like they are in the mix now. They're they're playing, right? It's just, again, it's the same thing. And what you said about the relationships as well is that if somebody asks you not to do something, and uh, you you say, okay, I know this, you know, Brian, I know this for a fact. Just don't say it yet. Or if it comes out, it comes out. Just you know, whatever the case might be. And you're like, oh, you know what? I value this relationship. I won't say it yet. I yeah. know what it is. And then I can be able to, if it's bullshit, I can be able to debunk or confirm whatever. Right. That's cool. But some people out there don't care. Like I would see sometimes that, uh, and basketball is basketball. You can say, you know, better percentage shooting, this, that. That's criticism. That's constructive, actually. I'll get in the lab. That's nothing. But I, I don't like when it, it becomes more of a character thing. Like that's, that's what gets me. Because in my head, I'm like, uh do we really know this guy? I don't know him. So do we really know this guy to say like, you know, he doesn't love the game of basketball that much or just because he's saying it or because or he's going through something. That's the one that gets me because well, often I haven't really seen ever seen you say something like that. 
But uh, if you had a hot take, what would you be your top 10 hot takes you ever said? That's a good question. But what you just <laughs> said was what, this is so true. You, you don't always understand what a player is going through or a team is going through, a coach is going through. And sometimes you, you will say stuff that can potentially be difficult and you don't understand everything. And that's just unfortunately the type of the, the job. Like we, we have to do that. That's why, that's why it's never going to be 100%, right? Um, you're never going to, in my job, you're going to upset people and maybe you can talk out, maybe it's a scar. Um, I try to stay away from hot takes. Here's a big thing. What happens with hot takes or any takes is that some people will give their opinion and then they'll stick to it no matter what. And they won't come off of it. Like they'll like, this is what the one thing I stopped making predictions about awards. Like right now, everybody wants to, who's your MVP prediction. Who's your MVP prediction. Okay. I don't do that because if I do, if I make a prediction, not just an MVP or whatever, then I'm going to like defend it all year long ah. instead of, being open to seeing how things change. Now, now, we could have a different set of opinions. Like, for example, I think it will be almost impossible for Giannis to win the MVP this year because he's won two and he's won a championship. He should have won la the year before that and the year before. Exactly. Before. So, exactly. two years ago, the Bucks win 58 games. They should have won. Number one overall seed. His stats are crazy 30 points, 12 rebounds, seven assists, whatever, right? Third place. Unbelievable, right? Because the bar is so high. And I say the same thing about Jokic, right? Like, um, I don't think Jokic can win the MVP this year. Almost anything that he does. Because he's won three. They got, <laughs> they got eliminated in the second round last year, which was you know considered a disappointment. And, like, what's he going to do? Is he, he averages the exact same stats. People are like, okay, he's done that. Like, you know, that's going to be the thing. Like, you reach a certain level where, where you're, you're not just competing against everybody else, you're competing against, um, uh, you're competing against um, yourself. yourself. Or, you're competing yeah. against your own self and your own expectations. Like LeBron reached that level. Jordan reached that level. You know, the great. It's almost an honor. Okay, so I come out and say, I don't think there's really a pathway for Giannis to win the MVP this year. Yeah. And... Then he goes out, and he's just absolutely unbelievable. Maybe he's the best ever. Maybe he's averaging 38 points. Maybe the maybe, He's throwing good. <laughs> right. Maybe the Bucks win 65 games. Like, people thought they might win, like, 52, and they win 65. I don't want to be sitting there in January going, he can't win the MVP. You know, that, that's what I say today, but I want to be able to say, I want to be able to have the freedom to say in December, or January, February, you know what? I thought back in October that Giannis could win the MVP, but he's actually clearing. He had this highest bar. He's actually clearing that bar. I don't, I don't want to have to stick to... And what happens is when people make predictions, they, they defend it. They take yeah. a position and they defend it no matter what. So I try to avoid that. But um, the same thing happens with takes. If you give a take, especially if you get a lot of attention for it, uh. now all, all of a sudden... You're like, now I now I gotta have my backup. Now I gotta play defense <laughs> because people are gonna come after you and the players are trying to try to prove, prove you wrong. And it doesn't always make for good TV. It would be better if you came out and were like, these guys are no good. They have never gonna win. No because people do do that. I try to avoid that so that I don't I I have yeah. the ability to change my mind and evolve with the season. So okay, have you ever had something that you said it was like, ah, I should have not said that? Many times, and I can't remember. <laughs> I know you're asking me a good question. You want me to give you... No, no, no. I'm and, trying no, no, to think. specifically. I just yes, the of moment. course, many times. Uh, and I'm just, at this exact second, not remembering them. But it's give okay. me a couple of weeks, and I'll, it'll happen again. <laughs> but um, yes, it happens all the time, where I say something, and it just turns out to be dead wrong. Okay. And you're just like, oh, man. But you have to say, there's nothing... People respect when you say I was wrong. You say I was wrong, man. I thought that this was going to be a you, certain way. And I, you, say, I you, you know what? And okay, now me being uh, like in the podcast and stuff like that, like the first people I did, and you know, you know, kind of look up to and look on the news, you know, from you, uh, Mr. Super Modes, uh, Chris Haynes, I had on the show. I had Shams, I haven't had Shams on the show. I look at him, uh, the other guys, Mr. Z Zach, Zach, no, mm -hmm. and. Do you think like the dynamic is changing now? Like with guys not being a, like, is it different? I mean, obviously you are you and you've always been like 
the power of you know just you and your lane and what you're doing. But I'm saying like, it is is it looks like uh like another like batch is coming. You know, like uh, how the NBA we see it as right now at some point like maybe the next two years. Steph, Braun, KD are going to be looking for the next batch coming in, which is yeah. it's totally understandable. It's not because yeah. they're not good; they're great. I but but it's the next, not the, not necessarily the next generation. Don't get me wrong, again, huh? That doesn't mean the next generation is going to be good. It's the next wave of of talent or the next. Do you feel that at all with ESPN or any network you work you with? You mean like with with media? With yeah, media. with media. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, but I would say that. We're not in a great place with media right now. We're not in a great place because we're, 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 we're de- I think we're devaluing things. I'm sound like an old man here. I think we're devaluing things that help build the league up. Like one of the things that w- storytelling, yes. we're, 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 everything's too short right now. People are too focused on tweets, too focused on guys getting crossed over, too focused on guys getting dunked on. Low lights. Uh, people getting embarrassed, you know, yes. social media posts, not as much on storytelling, like learning about players and learning their backgrounds and, and you know, cr- what, I, what I call chronicling the season, yeah. like talking about what's going on the season, like nuance and stuff like that. Um, you know, when you're really into your team and you know about all the players and you know, you know, there's special features done on them, like just the other day, uh, inside stuff. You remember that show at all? Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a show that was on every Saturday, and they just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. The show, the show itself, whatever, got inducted to the Hall of Fame. And they used to like tell st- every. It was only I was on every Saturday when I was a kid. Ahmad Rashad and Willow Bay, and they would tell stories of players, you know. And yeah, there's a lot of different avenues of that right now. Like players have their own media, and you know. Yeah, but the, but this is. This is what I'm saying. Like it, even me, like even me, the first thing I thought about was like, oh, I want to, I want to get Mr. Brian to interview him. And the reason why is because the storytelling is because the learning curve of being on a camera, trying to explain your story, trying to explain a narrative or debunking a narrative, which there's nobody better than somebody who's been doing it on national, on the national TV stage ever. So in my head, I'm like, okay, what is because, you know, like we said, like people don't talk about the energy shift from the season. Like, oh, one team is going like this. Now they're going like this. Why are they going like this? You yeah. know, people just, just get... Not as much. Like, th- like, for example, ESPN responds to what the audience says it wants because we, because we can analyze the data so much better now. And so if the audience says it wants debate about who the Lakers should be running their offense through or the LeBron should play... Back uh, to true. backs or whatever, all that, all the stuff is a, like a debate. LeBron should be playing back to backs. No, LeBron should be sitting out. LeBron should they should be running through Anthony Davis. No, they should be running through Austin Reeves. Like that is what it becomes. LeBron Instead should not of, be playing back to backs, by the way. But that's, that's just me, though. Okay, that's I, just me. I would agree with you, but he doesn't agree with you because he's like, I know my body. I quit. He was to play. I, I, I did, like LeBron gave me a lecture like eight years ago. What? About don't count my minutes, basically. He was like, <laughs> "Don't count my minutes," and I, I had a few moments where I've um, try not to count his minutes, his minutes but count. generally I I don't count his minutes. But like where where and you know, there's there's room for that. There's room mm-hmm. for like let's have a debate about the Lakers. Can can the Lakers make the playoffs? Should the Lakers trade for somebody? Like there's room for that, but like there isn't a story where they tell a story about. Dalton Connect or, you know, Jared Vanderbilt. They yes. don't tell that story. And because the the yes. data says the clicks go on two people debating about whether the Lakers should trade Anthony Davis or this something. This is like what that. I was telling Tony about the movies. He asked me a question, I think it might have been like two pods away before. He said, Do you watch the movies you watch now? And I said, I can't watch any new movies because it's become so much of feed the monster, feed the data, feed what people want, then generally, I just watch all movies now. I go back to Godfather, Goodfellow, like just generally, actors you don't even know give a nice, like I don't know who's the new actor now. Nowadays it's all, you have to have a brand, you have to be famous for you to be in a movie, you for you to do a cameo, for you to be in the in the, in the, in the business. So I was like, okay, I, I just, 
I try not. I don't really watch new stuff, so it's kind of the same. I can I can feel now. It's yeah, but like <laughs> my bosses would say, well, that's all well and good, and that sounds <laughs> nice. But if you want the ratings, you better talk about the Lakers or the Warriors. True. So like, I mean, I would say, well, let's lead, let's lead storytelling instead of following. Instead of following the crowd, let's lead and try to get the crowd. But I got you. you okay, know. so let's, let's give the crowd what they want. So Warriors, what do you think about Clay leaving? Um, it had to happen. You know, because uh, if you go look at all great dynasties, they almost always end badly. There are very, 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 very few times is it a nice, happy ending. You no, know, I hate that, right? You know, you, you know, know, I hate that. So, so okay, he had to leave. Because, like, last year, I don't know if you remember this, but yeah. the Warriors came to Chicago, mm -hmm. and they honored the Bulls. They were honored one of the Bulls championship teams. Yeah. And Jordan didn't show or whatever, and... They booed the general manager of the team. They boo he, He's been dead for years. But they booed him because he was the one who broke up the team. And so here they're celebrating. The Bulls won six oh championships in eight years. And now it's 25 years on, right? And they're honoring. And the reason they did it when the Warriors were there was so that Steve Kerr would be there because yes. Steve Kerr was part of it. And Steve, Steve Kerr is sitting on the court, and they're booing the, um, they're booing the, the general manager who's been dead. Who put the team together and has been dead? Oh my god! Because they're angry about how it broke up. And Jordan, what? Why did he break up though? Why did he? You know what I mean? Like you probably know this. You've been calling for twenty two years. Well, they made a. You know that was kind of what the last dance was yeah. about. But I mean, they broke up for five, six reasons. You know, like Jordan was exhausted and the, they didn't want to pay anymore, and they thought Phil Jackson had too much power. There's a lot of different reasons it broke it up because that's what happens. Dynasties end badly. And so I was saying, like, this, the Warriors should, or we're sitting there looking, and, and, and their goal, the Warriors' goal should be when they get together in 25 years, that nobody hates each other, right? When they celebrate the 25th anniversary or the 10th anniversary of the championship teams, that nobody hates each other. That should be the goal. Yes. But it's hard because that happens. Like, you know, like the Celtics got together, like, not all, you know, from they won their championship, like Ray Allen didn't come or whatever, you know, and... Um, oh, they don't, why, why do you Ray Allen didn't go? Didn't go because it's just hard he, feelings because he left, you know, he left, went to Miami. They're not over it, you know, and, um, you know, Dwayne Wade got inducted in the Hall of Fame and LeBron wasn't there, you know? So, I mean, his son had just had that hard incident. I mean, he might have yeah. had a really good reason, but he wasn't there. It's hard, it's you hard. Know? No, so, no, okay, that's... I definitely, I mean, my, my son, guys, I'm just letting you give you, you know, if we have a, no, like, a get together and stuff like that, my son is in the hospital or, or kid, guys, I, I won't make it, but you will see me in a video or something. <laughs> but, but again, what you're saying, you're not wrong, though, about the dynasty going like that and stuff like, what about Spurs, though? No, Spurs, no? Yeah, but even that, Tony Parker left. But you're right, Spurs, pretty good. It was good. It's pretty Spurs. good. Yes, yes, was, Tim. It was, it was Spurs, pretty good. Manu. You know the guys, Dio, and but it didn't end perfect. Like Tony <laughs> Parker, like was upset. He left. Went remember he went to Charlotte for like. Oh, a he year? did go to Charlotte. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's but just okay, it wasn't things end bad. I mean, he wanted to get. Uh, I had, understand. He had one more year. No, well, he had two years in Charlotte. I think he played one, but. But he got paid a lot of money to go. Yeah, no way the thing he is, like for... that, things don't always end that great. So, like, my thing on the Warriors was, you ride it out till the wheels fall off, and they did. You know, and Clay. Clay was a little bit offended. I don't blame Clay because, like, on one hand, he sees Draymond get paid. He sees Wiggins get paid. And Steph is always getting paid. He's like, okay, now it's time to pay me. And they're like, eh, actually, you know. And they offered him more money than he got from Dallas. But there was they hard did? feelings. Yeah. This is stuff, you know, you don't get to find out about, you know, really. He, I mean, he took less money uh, from what they initially offered him to what he... Mm -hmm. I don't know what they were offering him at the end. At the end, there wasn't, I don't think, much talking. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he was offended. You know, he was offended, uh, you know? Scotty I mean, Pippen got upset. Jordan, you know, they didn't want to pay him. Can you believe that? Think about what each year of Michael Jordan was worth. And at the end, they were kind of tired of paying him. They, got, they kind of were tired of paying him. That's bullshit. Right, Sorry, from from, I, no, I can curse. It's bullshit. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, bullshit, it, it, bro. I don't care just, how you feel. It's it just, Michael Jordan. It's Scottie Pippen. It's all these guys. It, it, at the end, they were done with each other. So I'm saying, like, it just happens. It's the nature. You're not supposed to. 
Not always, obviously, but yeah, it happens most of the time. Most of the time it happens. <laughs> yeah. It, it most of the time it ends badly. So I would say the the Warriors did a pretty good job. You know, the, the Bucks, it's a challenge for the Bucks to keep everybody together. It is the a way the NBA is built, a team is not supposed to be contending for seven or eight years in a row. It's not supposed to be. They're violating the natural order. Uh-huh. They're violating the natural order. They're 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 bending the, it's you're supposed to have like a you know the bending way, the spoon in the matrix. You're like yeah, yeah you're they're bending it like they're 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 fighting against order to to keep themselves. That's why I'm saying like it's so hard to be competitive like for this long of a run. Like it's just very very hard. It's not supposed to be this way. The way the, the way players have to get paid. The way you know, you, that you, that to keep a to keep a team good, you trade your young players. You can't play your young players. It's not. It's supposed to be a circle. And like you know, the Bucks are fighting against it to try to keep it, to, to extend it. You know, which, which, um, which, 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 which are the teams you think they're fighting against? It? Apart from the Bucks, right? Which are the teams? I mean, the Bucks and Bulls is fighting against this circle. Certainly the Warriors, like, but it's kind of broken a little bit. But you know, the fact that the Warriors were they went to the they went to the finals five years in a row, between fourteen and nineteen, five years in a row. This is just unheard of in the modern era, right? And finally. Guys get hurt, you know, and they go two years where they're terrible, and they come back and win. That was amazing. The 2022 championship, three years after that they came back and, like, rose back up, that was amazing. Like, that 2022 championship is more special than the ones they won with Durant when they were just way better than everybody else. Dominated you know? everybody. It was- that 22 championship is so valuable. So here they are in 24, kind of crumbling a little bit, and people are like, oh, the Warriors are done. Like, sort of, sort of like, you know, like insulting them. Ah, they're done. They're, they can't do it anymore. I'm like, yeah, but look what they did. They were, they were great. They won four. Then they went all the way down to the bottom, and then they came back up and won it again. Like, what an amazing ride. You know, like, let's celebrate the 2022 championship. Let's not yeah. denigrate them in 2024 because that's what happens. But that's not the way it goes in the world. In the world, you have to. The, the Lakers the same way. The Lakers were good for a few years, and now they're just they're, they're holding out against. They're trying to hang on to, to way the way they were four years ago. They're not that team anymore. It's, you know, it's it's hard to refresh it. But you know, How the Spurs made the playoffs for twenty straight years. For twenty straight. Twenty straight years, and now they're down. You know, now they're they're coming back up. But like, it it happens. Like it's you know it's and that's the other thing. Sometimes it's okay not to win the championship. That's another thing about this era. Like this yeah, era is not is, okay with that era, bro. We we we. <laughs> I'm laughing, but like I, because I, I said this as a player as well. Like we we sacrifice so much and say you know, and especially if you're one of the guys in the teams that you stay in the same team and you're not the like oh the easy like you wanna this is what I'm gonna do this is how we're gonna do it and really it's. It's hard. And I'm not saying you don't take no for an answer, but it's hard not to leave at the end. Let's talk about the Bucks this way. Okay. The 2021 championship is one of the purest championships that you could ever win. Because Amazing, the whole man. team was built by the team, and they all grew together, right? That's true. And, and they Six came together. Six years together. together. It, Five, four, <laughs> right. From 21, we're still, oh, my God. See, right, yeah. all everybody came together. A couple of guys were like, brought, like Bobby came in, or whatever. But basically, homegrown, yes. all the way grown, and you had these losses, and you kept coming back. And you had some losses, you kept coming back. And small market hadn't been to the finals in fifty years. Fifty years. Fifty years, right? Yeah. Fifty years. They finally go back. They win. They win in this amazing moment. COVID is coming to an end. All these people are out in the in the middle of this of the, the district, city. Sixty thousand people were. <laughs> it's an incredible moment. There'll never be a night like that again. Like took the trophy no. to Greece, Acropolis, the whole planet. So that's what I'm saying. Like that, it is okay to say that that is the mountaintop. <laughs> but like, but like, it's like no, no, no. Jordan won six, and you know <laughs> how many, how many rings? You had three rings. Well, you're not as good as the guy who won two. You know, you're better than the guy who won two, and you're not as good as the guy that won four. Yeah, but you're like, well, wait a minute. That know, moment, that mo- like I told, you know, Mark Lazary, who sold the team, he sold his part of the team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of the owners. When he sold the team, he didn't want to sell. He didn't want to sell the team. But, you know, he just he had other things he needed to do, and he was getting a great price. And I said, it's okay. 
because you made a lot of money first. <laughs> but second, I said, it's okay because you'll never have that feeling again. That feeling will never you, you be You want to hear something, Mr. Bryant? Sometimes I'll, like... I was I have this section when you like what do you move what movies you watch and you cry sometimes if I watch the run like I'll like in, in in the end of the run of the the whole like playoff run and the whole season and how he went and Ayan is going down and us and playing this that like I sometimes I'll tear up sometimes of because, course it's so emotional it means so much right yeah and with Bobby and the guys and 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 Chris and Drew, like it's I don't know yes. I say this and I get good go, right go, 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 go. because it matters so much well I'm telling yeah. you it's gonna be it's going to be almost impossible to replicate that. <laughs> even if you win another one, even if Giannis wins two more, it will never be like that because that was the purest one and it happened in Milwaukee and I was like that. And like what I say, like, oh, I mean, that's I why... Me, let's win, not, let's win. And we'll no, forget, I know, I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> Obviously, everybody wants to win one more. But like, it is worth saying the mountaintop was achieved. Like, like you, once you are a champion, like, that's it. Like, Forever, that's true. Like, I hate how it's like, oh, but he only won two. You know, <laughs> this guy won four. I mean, I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Like, it's okay. Sometimes when you reach the first round of the playoffs and you get eliminated, sometimes you did great. Sometimes you really, really achieved. And can't you say, boy, you got the most out of that season? No, it's like, nope. If you didn't win the championship, you were a failure. But wait a minute. We overcame this and this. And, uh, you know, this guy retired. This guy left in free agency. And we, and we, we, you know, we, we could have been here, but we got here. Can't we celebrate here? Can't we celebrate that between, you know, October and May, we gave our fans like 50 great nights? Like, can't you celebrate that? Like, that's not celebrated. That's they a don't... way, that's a whole different respect. Have you ever uh, won a work in, in the NBA? No, because teams why? are vicious. Why is that? Because here's why. Because let's say, I, let's say, let's say I had a friend and he hired me to, to, to play for the, you know, play for office, whatever. Play for the Omaha Royals. Let's say there's some team, and um, then I come in there. And I do like great work, and then like the star player doesn't like the GM. Doesn't like the GM, and so the GM gets fired, and everybody else gets fired underneath them. I, no, I don't like he that. but okay. Let me tell you exactly how this works. This is how I believe in my whole heart, and this is what I believe. If you're of value, people know know this about you. It does, it does, regardless of what people people say outside of it, regardless of what people what you think, if you're out of value, you could fit anywhere, and say, oh, it's front office or is this or whatever you want to do into the NBA. If you have a team or you, now, if specifically you have a team and you go like, I was racing such and such, and I really want to work for them and I want to be intern, blah, blah blah. That's different because that doesn't mean you always play for them. But if another team, because it's thirty teams, first of all. And second of all, like they ask around, they know they're not they're know. not investing it like this. I don't know, especially man. if you dissect basketball like this and you like. Well, I will say this: like nothing I could ever do in my profession could ever achieve the feeling that you guys got when you won the championship. That's something we can't have, and that's why I kind of have a strict rule that I never, because a lot of the media and the, the, it is important for the media to go in the locker room so that the fans can experience the championship. But I never yes. go into the locker room when the team wins and celebrates because that's not for me that's for them you know yes. i think it's i think it's important to have the cameras in there so that the um so that the fans can sort of feel it too because they can celebrate that's too it is. but i did one time yeah. i did one time which time was this in 2016 when the cavs won i did go in then because you know i had i had born and raised in cleveland and i covered that team for yes. many years and everything like that um, but uh, I would never do that because that's not for me. That's not what we do. Um, that's for the team. But you, I, but you can't achieve that. You cannot achieve that feeling of victory. I mean, that is, that is, that but is but true, that's yeah. one of the reasons why I like the NBA Cup because, like, that's something else to win. NBA. So can I? So now before we go into that, like the NBA play. Uh, no, a Players Cup. Okay, NBA Cup. Right. Let's call it this. Uh. To me, it was one of the best things that ever happened. Because yeah. in the beginning, just like the plane, people hated it. It's like, oh my God, plane tournament, who, what? The best thing ever, right? And now they're playing a cup. And I'll say why. It's because me being from overseas, we always had two competitions. We always grew up with the exactly. cup and the league trophy. Yes. Which always, the cup was always another team. Was a team that was hot. 
was a team that, because it's an elimination game, was a team that was, oh my God, these guys are strolling right now. And then the and then the trophy was the team that persevered, the team, the team that was more um, consistent, the team that was more, you know. So I like I loved it when it came in. Now, obviously money wise, of course now because yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got great sponsors now. What what is yeah. it called now? It's uh, Emirates. Emirates Cup. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you, well yeah because you guys got to the yeah you guys got the bonus last year right? Yes. You were in the semifinals. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. went to so yeah. uh, we went to the the yeah. Semi so semis, so we definitely got uh, a little bit of the bonus. We love to have the first place bonus, obviously. But, yeah, but. I was surprised. <laughs> like, I'm not surprised that some of the guys, like on the two ways, well, would be happy. But like, I was surprised how much yacht, how much uh, LeBron wanted that five hundred thousand. Yeah, LeBron makes like almost five hundred thousand a game anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> I it's not the money my, per se. It's uh, obviously the level of respect, but it's like, oh, well, I get to do what I love and win and get some. This, this is extra. We call it extra. Now, like after 20, 10 years, they won't call it extra. But the, in the first year of it, they're like, oh, no, I get to do this. Also, like look at last year. If you're an Indiana Pacers fan, you haven't yeah. had anything to cheer for. They haven't been in the playoffs in years. You haven't had any cheer, anything to cheer they, for. They definitely did last year. Like the They entire... get all the way there, and it totally engages their fan base. Like, yes. Why is that a bad thing? It's not a why bad thing. Why is it That's a bad true. thing to excite your, your fan base? Like, Like, okay, let's say a team loses in the second round. Okay. What about all those times where their fans were all excited and got to go to the game and experience it and and like all that? Like, does that mean nothing? No. But like in the in the modern era, in, in the, and the media feeds right into it. It's, it's our <laughs> problem too. Like you get a, you get eliminated in the second round. Season was a failure. You know, like well, wait, how can in what other? This is why these owners fr freak out because these owners are all billionaires, and they all can have really good years, right? Like they, they all can make a billion dollars in their company and they can all go and they can be like, yeah, how would you do this year? Well, I, my net worth increased by 355 million. Great job. What about you? My net worth increased by 700 million. Good job, you know? What did you fly here? I flew here on a G5. What did you fly? I flew here on a G6. Oh, that's good. But when they, but when they play, they can't win. They're used to winning no matter what. And then they play and then they have to be losers. These billionaires, 29 of them are losers every year. They, you know, they're not used to that. And it freaks them out and it makes them do really strange things. It makes them make really weird decisions because they're not used to that. So why does everybody, everything have to be deemed a, a loss? You know, obviously some years are terrible for some teams. Some teams totally screw what, up. What's considered, what's considered terrible? If you have like the most expensive roster in the league and like you miss the playoffs. Like, so, oh, okay, okay. Like, that, you okay. know, like... Golden State last year. <laughs> That's I mean, bad. Yeah, but I don't think anybody was expecting them to like go all the way to the, you know, I, because I they were having injuries I, and all this I stuff. I agree, but it was but, a bad year. Well, yeah. But which is why they couldn't keep paying Clay. But um, ultimately, they should celebrate the great run that they had. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't that you don't you try know, this year. They, but. I'll tell you one of the things that irritates me and I like don't like about the NBA is this tanking stuff. I hate I hate it with like all my heart. Like I dislike it because what you're basically rewarding a team for not competing, for being so we are out here busting and going and working and showing up and playing back to backs and again and again and again to be last when we when we pick. If you made it the other way, I'll tell you what would happen. So I know I know about you. You you like to study finance and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie Munger. You know Charlie Munger? Yes, sir. He passed away like two years ago. He had this, he's Warren Buffett's right hand man. Mm -hmm. doing, and one of the things he used to say is if you show me the incentive, I'll show you the results. Basically, if you make enough of an incentive, I can predict how things are going to go because people will go to the incentive, you oh. know? And if the way to get a star player is to lose, the teams, there's the incentive. I'll show you the results because the teams will go to the star. Well, they, they know that's how they get a star player. Yeah, but I don't, I don't. So what bothers me is not the one year. Cool. You had a bad year. Oh, we got a chance to do that. Cool. Yeah. I hate when teams do this consecutively. Yeah, that's a good point. From a year to year to year to year. So hold up, bro. So you're going to tell me you're going to try to pick Victor five times? You're gonna lose and try to pick a guy like uh, quote unquote like Victor five times. 
It's a good which, point. Which I understand from the other way. If it was the other way around, everybody would be top heavy. But everybody would fight more to win. Right. And to we get a chance to kind of pick. But it's 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 insane. So, you know, and the reason I say that is because I come from uh, from a place that if you're the last team, you get relegated. So it would Europe. Be, yeah. It's <laughs> such a different mindset altogether about the whole concept of relegation. And it would be amazing. I for, hope. I, I, with my whole heart, I hope we see the relegation in the NBA. You know what's going to happen? The level of play, yes. the, every game will matter. I don't know if season. everybody knows what relegation is. Who's okay, so, so relegation is that if you're the last team in the NBA or the two last teams, let's say, from 30, it could be two or two, four, depending on, you would be relegated to the G League. Or right, or from the the cities, the whole city would be relegated. Yeah, so like, to- <laughs> if it was in the NBA, it would be like, maybe like the bottom two teams would go to the G League, and the two best G League teams would come up. The NBA. So, so yeah, so Iowa, and Iowa e- Energy, Erie and Erie yeah. would go to the right. NBA. That would be amazing for each city. Do you know how much cities will fight for a spot in the NBA or Europe or however you wanted to yes. do it? It would be amazing to see that, and obviously <laughs> it it eliminates the concept of tanking. Yeah. But it will never happen. It will not because it's, I mean, obviously, because contracts and the way the salary well, cap. Well, also, just to, just think, <laughs> to get anything passed in the NBA, anything of of magnitude, you have to have the vote of the owners. You mm-hmm. usually usually you have to get uh, three quarters majority. So, twenty three out of the thirty owners have to say yes. Why would even one owner? <laughs> Forget about seven. Why would even one? Like, wait a minute, you're saying to me that I could be a G League team and my team that's worth three billion dollars could be worth. A million dollars in a year? No way. Yeah, no, but it won't be worth a million dollars. You know why? Because you're still going to have the fans, and you're still going to... If you're an NBA team and you get relegated to the Agility team, you win the Agility title, for sure. You win it and going back to the NBA next year. So much <laughs> about European sport is so much more pure than, than American sport. And here's another example of this. If you are a team who is fighting to avoid relegation, and you avoid relegation, you celebrate... Yes. You like, well, we finished ninth place. But we did not finish 10th. Yeah. And they celebrate. Exactly. Nobody would have ever celebrate in the NBA finishing ninth. Yes, they would. They celebrate playing. Come on. You well, celebrate. <laughs> I know. They celebrate it. But then after, when they're done, they say that season was a failure. Yes, they celebrate it that <laughs> night. And that's what I'm saying. Like, they should appreciate the celebration from that night. True, 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 true. Okay. So, but like, that's the low level ecstasy. We need more of it. In the NBA, we and that's why I'm for the play-in. I'm for the the cup. Okay. I'm for like honoring you know things besides winning the the, the ring. That you can you can you can declare yourself a success without winning the championship. That we need more of it. So I got a question for you then. You 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 could buy an NBA team today. Which one would you buy? You know, well, obviously you'd want one of the the big. <laughs> you know, you'd want the Lakers. But I thought. The you know a year ago Jordan sold the Charlotte Hornets. Mm-hmm. That would have been a good team to buy, just like the Bucks were a good team to buy, because they were way down, and it was an old decrepit arena mm-hmm. and it was sort of in a rundown part of town. You know there was a lot of ways you could improve it. Yeah, mixing the the right? business side of it, the real you estate know, and the pff, new arena. You know, team gets better. You have a st- superstar player, like Charlotte. Same thing. Charlotte is not as bad of a. If you ask the average NBA fan about Charlotte, they're like, Pff. they've been bad ever since they came. They've been bad for 20 years. And people think that it's a small market. It's not a small market. No, it's a big market. It's, a, it's big a big market. It's very, very vibrant. Like, that is something that could take off. Yeah. So that was a smart buy. But even though they paid like $3 billion for it. But like, um, the Bucks were a really smart buy. Like, you know, if you could replicate that, that's more realistic. You're, you're not, Lakers are not going to be for sale. Like they're not. Why would they sell? No, why they would they not, sell? They're not. But I'm saying if you could own a team, right? Ever. This is hypothetically. Which one? You, so is the Lakers. Why the Lakers? Just because of their big team or the players you, they have? Or do you remember the first? Well, the reason you'd buy the Lakers is because it's the best market and players want to play here. Do you remember the first Laker game you came to? Do you remember that? Yeah, I just wanted to remember which year was that. How did like it be you remember it that how it felt? Yes. Right, it was different. Gold, purple, and gold, and then the whole. It's Hollywood. I, it's different. It's different. I can I'll still remember my first Laker game, which was in 2003 with Shaq and Kobe and Carl Malone and Gary Payton. I remember that game. Not that I'm saying now, I'm remembering more and more and more. I got into it with a fan, actually, one of those games. You did? So, well, yeah. So, I didn't get into it with a fan. So, what happened Because you're always coming off the bench. You're, you're very something, active something. Yeah, on the yeah. bench. 
So I remember that game vividly because I remember close to the fourth quarter, uh, it was a play that LeBron scored, Giannis scored, LeBron scored, Giannis scored, and he's like eight minutes to go, and the whole gym stood up. Right. That was like I get goosebumps. Like oh, I was like, oh shoot, this is this is real. This is something different. And then I think Giannis got hurt, and then some guy was like, "Oh yeah, good that you got hurt, whatever." And he said it in Greek, so that's what oh, I got even more no. pissed. The way he said it in Greek, I was like, "That's that's ah, messed up." That's messed up, yeah. And then I stood up and I went to him. I was like, "What's your problem?" In Greek? Yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Like, come here, bro. And then he was like, "He didn't take a picture with me." I'm like, "Oh a come on, baby, man. get yeah. get him out of here." And then, yeah. and then I walked up. Well, that up, could happen anywhere. And, and then, mind that's... you, this was going on. I'm talking to this guy. Why this guy? Like he's cheering me on. He's like, the nice is help. And then, then you understand like how much of uh, it's not about the fans. It's about people. People. Are, it's the people are great. It's just some people are just idiots. Like they just. I, I, look, I'm from Ohio. <laughs> I grew up in Ohio and everything like that. But when you come to a game in LA, or you come to a game in New York, it is different. It is different. Like, I, I, I wish I, I wish it was not like that. I wish it could say it's the same everywhere. I mean, you can have amazing stuff happen in all these places, but I understand why these guys want to play for the Lakers. It's now, now I say, I would say, like, there's something special. Like I said about the Bucks winning the, the 21 championship. Like, there's something special about that. That that can't be duplicated. Like, when the when the when the Heat won in Miami, yeah, that didn't feel like when the Bucks won. You know, that was like a pure. Like not all championships are created equal. I always I always say like people are trying to count championships for like Jordan or whatever. Jordan winning the the fifth title in seven years, that title is not the same as LeBron winning in Cleveland being down three one. No, it's not the same. That, that's how. But, I feel but when like I that's say like, that, like people get the, oh they want to fight. What they don't want to fight. I'm just. Because, you know, it's all about the number, you know. It's all, how many, what's the it's number? It's not the number. If it was all about numbers, half of the, like, it's not only the numbers. It's what you do as an individual and how you do it. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but even what you said, 3-1, nobody thought it was going to happen. The reason our championship, they say, quote, unquote, is special, was because we were down 2-0. Yeah. And then we were down 2-0 again. Yes. In the, we was down 2-0 in the second round against, and then before that, we play our, like, our rivals, "Quote unquote rivals," you know, it does nothing like that in the NBA. It's just mostly every team is just better. Which Miami, who got who got us bounced in the bubble, yeah. and we had to play them and fight our demons and beat them for zero, and then go to Brooklyn, and now we're feeling good about ourselves. And then we go down 2-0 with the yeah, with the you team that lose this this close to Durant. By the way, which in that whole series we should have won by four two. By the way, but we messed up that the game before that. The game before that, they were down, and KD became this. Yeah, Steve Nash hugs him. Remember Steve yes. Nash hugs him? Yeah. <laughs> can, we put, can we put clip that photo and, and that 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 like this monster and like keeps them in the game, keeps them alive? Because if yeah. we would have won that game, we finish it in Milwaukee. There is no way they win Game Six in Milwaukee because we wanted it. We wanted it so bad, and we were we thought we were so much not better than them because of the Kyrie and Katie and James Harden, you know, and we're like. Like we can do this, we can do this, and it, and and I remember I walked in the locker room. I remember in Game Seven, and I told this Bobby's my witness. Everybody, I walked in. I said, "Bro, Bobby, I said, I promise you, if we win this game, this is gonna be a thirty for 30. And he was like, "Looking, was like, I was like, I am telling you, if we win this game, it's gonna be a thirty for thirty on the court, off the court of like how we won this game because this is not supposed to happen. We're playing against Katie, Kyrie, James Harden. These guys are amazing." You know, they, 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 they are... Just on the road, too. Yes, on and the on the road. And it's Game 7 in New York, which is LA New York, the biggest stage in, in, when it comes to basketball, right? And we got a chance. We got a chance. If we do this, oh, we're going. It doesn't matter what we feel. Right, but when you come to the, you come to the Lakers, like, let's say you come to the... Okay, I'm yeah. going to be a Laker. There's, like, been so many great Lakers that what you have to do become a Laker great is like impossible. Whereas impossible. if you go and be a great at like Milwaukee, that's th that, I mean, you can have this incredible achievement there. Like, or like New York, I don't understand. One of the things I never understood was why KD went to the Nets and stopped, not the Knicks. Because if, if you're great in New York, like there's not been that many. 
the difference between being a great Nick and a great Laker, think of the, think of the bar. <laughs> think of the guys, of, you know, we're here in L.A. Think of we're a block from the arena. Think of all the statues of the guys out there, and there's more statues coming. <laughs> Where are the statues in New York? There's no statues. No statues. I was feeling so that's I got why, it. like, I got it. you know, like seriously, like Carmelo went to the Knicks. He had like three good years. You know, three. Oh, what? Well, how many? How now many we're times gonna debate they, this for sure. Okay, but how many times did they get out of the first round? Like once yeah, or twice. Okay, I understand, okay. but you can't say maybe that. not his his own personal performance. So he's talking about first of all, Carmelo is had every year he had New York was a. A beast, right? When we go, when we, we say Carmelo. Now, as a team, of course, Doxy, it was his team takes continuity. If it was only about one player, you know how many individual guys would win, would be... Okay, that's top. fair. But like, his team only had like two or three good years. Which, which years was those, though? Which, which years? Well, the one year, I think the only, I think Carmelo only won one playoff series. In, in New York? Maybe two. I think he only won one. I swear to God. How many years team. was he? Though, you like know? seven or eight, seven. six or seven. Okay, seven or eight is but not I'm bad. Saying, he like, spent he's a dot in New York. He like, is. He's all the commercials. He yes. comes up. Like he, he walks around the city. He's like a, a deity. People. He he had like he had like a few good years, for a team that won one playoff series. Like, if you were Kevin Durant, you could have gone there, and you'd have been the greatest Nick for forty years. That's why I didn't get why he didn't how he went to Brooklyn, but that's what, what I'm saying. You, yeah. The, the, so the Bucks in 21, they win the championship. Amazing championship. Solid gold championship. 22. Could have easily won again, but Chris is hurt. Chris is hurt, that's true. Right? Like, like we'll get away. We'll get 23, away. Giannis is hurt. 24, Giannis is hurt. They have great teams, but it doesn't all fall into place. So like, the, what you take away from that is appreciate when you did get it. I appreciate that. that appreciate that. when I'm you did get it. You. These these <laughs> issues for the last three years only make the twenty one championship more, more valuable. It's not easy. It's that's not what, easy. That's what I'm saying. Like like, and I'm not saying in the moment. You know, when the Bucks would like lose and the season would end, that it would be like something that you should say. Oh, but we had twenty one. I'm not saying that you feel that, but it just reminds you of how valuable it is. It just listen to him, fans. Listen to him, uh, fans of Milwaukee for sure. I appreciate that. They just want us. They. They, fans in Milwaukee, from the time I've been in Milwaukee, which is 2019, 2019-2020, I have seen nothing but love. The Pfizer was being packed. And you got to understand, like, as a, as a team, we've been competing for a minute now. Like, if you think about it, 2019, what was 2019? We lost. Kawhi went ballistic with Church and the, and the other guys, and we, we was up 2-0 and lost with them. And then they ended up going to the finals and winning. That was the year we actually had... Golden State's number. I don't know if people remember this. We always of course. Play. Exactly. Which is why when you guys <laughs> came back from 2-0 the next year, it mattered so much because it's about the whole story. It's not just about the one exactly. year. Exactly. Exactly. So I I I do think that I think the Milwaukee Bucks fans appreciate that. I think the NBA fans are so caught up into but you guys don't help either though, all right? Of course not. <laughs> no, of course not. We definitely are bring out the worst. For you know? sure. Okay, so what is okay. I wish we brought out more of the best, but what is what is Brian doing on his off day? What is Brian doing on his? I have a seven-year-old son. My, you know, there is no such thing as an off day at home. But um, no, I, uh, I'm on the phone. Wow. All day. I, I really wish I, I have so many conversations to Nassis about like. Do not say basketball. No, it's basketball. But like <laughs> about like, how many conversations do I have about? a seventh man may be getting traded. You know, like, oh my God. The trade deadline season is the worst. Like, you spend, like, so many hours of your when, when does he start, though? In, like, December. But, like, this is my least favorite part of the job. Like, there's so much interest in trades and transactions. And, and people care more about is, a, is, is the fourth man going to get traded for that fifth man for two first round picks or one first round pick, and people care more about that than they do about a team, you know, how they did on a certain night. People care. That's the thing. We're in this. We're in this time where people care more about transactions than they do about results. Oh, that is true. And I what do you what do you think about the trades now? What do you think about Cat going to New York? I thought that Minnesota had to trade him because they got too expensive. Their owners couldn't uh, afford this it. This is this is what I thought too. I think the only re like 
I mean, obviously the Bulls' biggest. Just I don't think playing wise. I mean, they went to the <laughs> to conference the finals, conference yeah. finals. Like it didn't make any sense. But uh, it's a copycat <laughs> league, so I see that. I can do that. So for sure. basically, at some point they were going to have to trade Carl because they couldn't they couldn't afford to keep that team together. Long story short, the new rules and everything. And so they they did a trade when they did it where they they felt like they could get better. They 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 could have waited another year and not had another opportunity to do that. I I actually would have liked the Minnesota to keep it together and for New York to keep it together, but I understand why they did it. As somebody who knows Cat a little bit, what I felt bad about is that he truly had embraced being the supporting guy for Aunt Edwards. You got to think about this. Now I know they didn't achieve much before Ant got there, but Cat was the franchise player. Yeah. Cat makes All NBA. Cat is an All Star multiple times. He Two gets, point contest, this, that, everything. Yeah, he gets super max. He gets you know this, which is basically like you are our franchise player. The whole reason that the super max exists is that you're so valuable to us. We're going to give you so much money, and so he he achieves that. He 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 meets every criteria to be the franchise player. And then this other guy comes along who is better than him. And he's in his prime. He's not 34. He's like 27, 26, 27. He's in his prime. And he's like, you know what? This guy is better than me. I am going to support him. And last year, he handed it over. He goes, I am here to support Ant. And maybe not every minute of every game, you know. But he says, I'm going to be here. And so right when he gets into a place in his head where he's like, we're going to win at the highest level. I've been here for these years, and we were terrible. And we never made the playoffs. And, and, but now we're going to win. We're going to be here. I'm so invested in being a Timberwolf. Bam. Now, he can be a Nick, and he can have a great career, and he can be in commercials when he retires and stuff like that. And Nick is, the Knicks' is home is ultimately in a good place. But like... They were doing something in Minnesota. They were trying to do something pure. They were trying to build it from the start. And they were close. They were in the conference finals. And so he wanted to be a part of that. And they take it away. So I totally understand why the Knicks did it. I totally understand why the Wolves did it. It. I wish it hadn't have gone that way, though. I wish they would have let it go yeah. a little bit longer. No. Have you ever had bad, bad moments in media? God, yes. What's your top, like, top three bad, worst moments in media? Because I feel like we do have it as players, right? And like, what is what is media worst moment? What is the worst moment in media? Um, so like, <laughs> I mean, way like 20 years ago, like I got something really, really bad wrong. Um, Carlos Boozer, I mean, I mean, it's just, I said Carlos Boozer had re-signed and he hadn't, and he was he went, he went to the Utah Jazz. I was covering the Cleveland Cavs, and I I wrote a story. Carlos Boozer is re-signing, and he didn't re-sign. He went to the jazz and I was just, it was like on, it was just like, just, so like when you, when you say something that ends up being wrong, mm -hmm. like you don't do it on purpose, but like sometimes you just say something that you just get it wrong. You're like, Oh my God, I just got this wrong. Why did I do this? Um, there was another time where um, one of the things that I've learned in media that I've really tried to, you know, if a player says, you know, answers a question with a hundred words, he answers, it gives a hundred word answer. And then you go and you take, you can't put the whole hundred words in the story or you can't put the whole hundred words on TV. So you take out pieces of it. And over the years, it's, that's what's happened to me where I've said things on podcasts or on TV and people go and they take <laughs> like one sentence out of it and they strip away the context and they put it out there. And all of a sudden what I said is misrepresented. So in... In um, it's helped. What that's happened to me, it's helped me uh, be more protective of players. Um, where I see a player has said something, and I see how it could be taken like this, and it's so tempting, and like I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to. I have been victimized, so it made me better. But I like I've made a mistake. Despite being more sensitive to that, I have been guilty of doing that. Where it's happened with LeBron before. Like he gave this interview about Kobe and I did the exact thing that I said that I wouldn't do, which is like he said something and I, and I just used this part of the quote and I like interpreted it and he was, he was really angry about it and he was right. Like I, like even though I still believed what I said, I took, 
I took his quote out of context. Like not, I just did what I didn't want to do. And like he got upset about it. Did he tell you? Did he text you? Did he say, hey? He tweeted about it. He, <laughs> he put what me on blast of 10 million people. <laughs> I don't even remember. He was basically like, you know, you got this wrong, basically. And I, I, he was right. Like, like I, the details are, I didn't think the, the sentiment was wrong, but the way I did it was wrong. Like, and you're just like, yes. Well, at least you right. know, because a lot of people don't care. And that's how you ruin like good relationships with people. That's why people men they then can uh, can talk to you. Like I'm very I'm very open in general. You know, if it's stuff I don't want to talk about, I'll be like, hey, Brian, we can't talk about this. Yeah. Like, sorry, I, you know, I can't talk about this. But stuff I can talk about, I'll be like, hey, give me to I don't know October 15th or 20th. We won't talk about this till then. And after then, let's go. Whatever you want, because I understand what what it is. Because I'd rather me say my piece, podcast or my relationships. Instead of letting somebody else say what is not true, you know, other than me saying like, "Hey, this is exactly what happened." So, yeah. but okay. So now, what's your advice? What's your advice to podcasters or people who want to work for ESPN? Right. <sighs> if I want to have a long career to, in ESPN, what is your advice, right? Stories. Stories. Huh? My, my my goal every day is to find stories to tell, and sometimes you tell the stories in. 140 characters. Sometimes you tell the stories on a podcast where you can tell the full thing. Sometimes you tell the stories, you know, in really short, sometimes really long, finding good stories. It's really just it's trying to find a good story. And stories can be long, short, whatever. You know, like I got a lot of attention a few years ago where I told a story about what the Utah Jazz were doing where they were going to trade their whole team away, basically. And I did it really what I, I knew what they were doing, they were going to trade Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. I knew they were going to do that. I didn't know how they were going to do that, but, and I could have just come on. But you had a feeling, yeah, somebody told me yeah. um, that there was, <laughs> I, I, I could have just gone on and said, Hey, I think, um, I think the jazz are going to trade Gobert and Mitchell. And I could have just done that, but it was more interesting to tell a story about it. Like, you know, so what was the story about? What, what was the, well, they traded, Royce O'Neal. Yeah. Okay. Royce O'Neal is like a really important. Um, Please, yeah, I, I play. There's a crazy story. I played against Royce O'Neal in Spain. I was only in Spain overseas. I played against him, and the next year he went to not Phoenix. He went, came to the NBA, went to yeah, to Utah. Yeah. And, yeah. Like it, it was like 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 you remember the Miami Heat teams were really great. Like like um, when they won a couple of titles, and they went to all those like the the Heatles, the mm -hmm. Heat teams. Like, you remember how Shane Battier played on that team? He was, like, a mm. really important player. Um, imagine, like, one day you woke up in the summer and all of a sudden the Heat had traded Shane Battier for a draft pick. You'd be like... Uh oh And uh -oh. Th that's what the Jazz did. And you were like, why? Doesn't make any sense. Why? Why would, why would they do if you, that? If you trade and you get something back, cool, you're working right. continuity right. or you're something. But if right. you don't... Uh -uh. So that basically was their tell that they were about to break their team up. Okay. And so like if you if you have to know the sport really well and you have to know what to look for, but if you tell this story of like how come the Jazz would take a really important role player and trade him away for a draft pick? And then you go and wait a minute, why would they f fire a really good coach like Quinn Snyder and hire a guy who's never been a head coach before and then not only that but give him like a 6-year contract? Why would they do that? Why would they take this team that's close to winning and all of a sudden make these moves? Maybe it's because they're intending to trade their star players. So like telling that story, people really liked that. So whether it's in a podcast or, or whatever, I seriously, one of, the t one of the things about media that I could say that I've learned in, um, in 20 years of doing it is sometimes it takes a lot of skill to make something short. Ah. Right? Because you think things that are really good, like, are long. Like, The Last Dance, it's eight hours long. You know, like, a feature story that you may write is, like, you know, very long. It can be really amazing to make something that's interesting that's really short. So, but it's still storytelling. So you have to work very hard to be able to identify stories, to be able to tell stories. And you practice with your storytelling, whether you're talking, whether you're on camera, whether yeah. you're you're reading, like you know, one of the things we do at ESPN is essays, where we like read stuff over the top of highlights. Like, 
all that. Like I just recorded one about LeBron and Bronny. Okay. You know, like it's not that long. It's like 30 or 40 seconds, but it took a lot of work to get something in 30 or 40 seconds. So it's just really storytelling. And so, you know. The story, so, yeah, long story short, like, like storytelling is big for you to be. Like if you want to get signed to ESPN, guys, storytelling, you know, who you are, you got to big out your character, a little bit of swag. You see how they right. dress with the suits and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> But like, seriously, like, like you can see a game. It doesn't have to be a gigantic yeah. story. You can see a game and see what happens in a game and tell a little story about what happened in a minute in the third quarter, you know? So, but the, the key is it's tough to find good stories. You know, it's great when you find one, but it's tough to find good stories. So that's what I spend all my time doing. And sometimes I get exacerbated because I'm like, I haven't done any good stories. I haven't had any good stories in like days or weeks or months. But if you can tell a good story, even if it's about your career, if it's yeah. about something that you see, that is what you need to do. That's what I try to do. I have a feeling. I have a feeling you're coming up with some good stories in the next two weeks. I have a feeling. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I always say there's, in 20 years covering the NBA, there's, there's, there's three things I learned. Three things I learned. Um, one is there's always time that in an NBA game, in an NBA season, in a playoff series, there's always time. There's always time for redemption. Okay, obviously at some point the buzzer sounds, but there's but it, it it's a very forgiving, restorative op opportunity. The game of basketball. Yeah. You know, there's always time. So there, so and it kind of goes into my second thing that I say, which is, and this is something that you have to do in media too. The second thing I've learned from being around the NBA is how important it is to be able to take a loss that so often you're remembered for what you did when you win, but so often you're defined for what you do when you take a loss. How do you take, how do you respond when you take a loss? You've had a setback, right? Uh -huh. You had this terrible, unfortunate injury that happened to you. You've had to take this L. What will you do coming back from it? You are now going through that right now. Yeah. You lose three games in a row. What do you do? You're LeBron and you keep losing in the finals. Like how do you how do you pull yourself back up and do this? And go back again. You you go on a, a, a long West Coast road trip where you play five games and you go one and four. How do you pull yourself up? How do you respond from taking a loss? Because there's always more opportunities. Okay, so there's always time. Learn how to take an L. And then my third thing that I've watched in the NBA and learned is how rare it is to have happiness. Yeah. You know. So I say to people, I am around mega rich people every single day. I am, I am talking to, interacting with, standing next to, watching multimillionaires and billionaires all day long. Yeah. And so many of them are not happy. So I say to, when I speak to classes and I speak to players, like I recently spoke to a college team, I said, success is when you can get to a spot where you can choose happiness over money. You can't always do that. Sometimes you have to take care Not of your true. debts. Sometimes you have to take care of your family or whatever. But there are so many people in the NBA who are so wealthy, who are so unhappy. And so there's so much unhappiness in the league. The people who are in the best position are those who are happy, which is, again, why I say just because you don't win a ring doesn't mean you had a bad year. <laughs> Are you happy? Can you be happy? And so, seriously, those three things, almost in that order, specifically the happiness part, because there are so many people in this, in this world that you and I operate in. You are in the NBA. I am on the, on the edge of the NBA. It is a world that is filled with excess, right? Yeah. Excess everything. But so many people are unhappy. No, I... I I, I I would say one thing, one of the things you know, and people and I'm positive, always with good energy, and I always like you know my my goal is to just to have this glow, right? This glow like hey, nothing can stop me. I'm always happy. I'm always you know in a good mood, but not in a good mood and stuff like that. But just always my aura and my energy, you know, to be like that. But the things you said are that's so 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 important because it's a lot of people who. You know, a lot of people are watching this. They want to be in the NBA. They want to be in sports. They want to be, and to them, it's it's all about the the nice stuff. They don't see the 
the struggle which you're talking about, right? The yeah. the losses in the media, the losses in basketball, the losses outside of it, and saying like, oh, okay, yeah, but uh, they're getting paid so much money, or this guy's it's he's a owner, he all has a club. Like they want to win. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to look yeah. good, you know. And I think this is the other thing that a lot of people are struggling with. But now it's getting better and better because now we get to like dissect and talk talk about it, and you know this this is. They identify it, and once they identify it, you can address it as well. Man, I uh, okay. You know, I, I want it's time to you know to close the show on the podcast. But before I do that, I want to really want to ask you, and this doesn't have to do with basketball, doesn't have to do with anything on sports. What is the top three movies that you watch that makes you make you cry? <sighs> make me cry. <laughs> the movie Major League. Major League. You don't know that movie. We don't watch Major League. Is it the movie with... Uh, I mean, I don't know if I would cry if I watched it today, but I cried many times when I watched it um, as a young person because um, it's a bit about baseball and the, the team, you know, wins in the end. My, is, my hometown it, team. Is Major Cleveland. League the one... Uh, it's a, yeah, and... Uh, it's about the Cleveland Indians, which is my team growing up. Now they're the Guardians, but they, they win. They don't win, win the championship, but they win in the end. They beat the Yankees. It's so hard to beat the Yankees that, you know, they, they make a movie about it if you beat them one time. <laughs> um... But you said earlier, I don't, I don't cry in this. But you said earlier, you like The Godfather. Yeah, that's an amazing movie. That movie, I, when I first, it was thirty years old when I first saw it. I mean, that's an amazing movie. You know, and, and you know the that movie. I think like everybody ha, ha, has it wrong. Like everybody has the whole aspect. Like, oh, it's a, it's Italian and, and and about the mob and blah blah blah. No, no, no. It's actually about a guy who has no effing clue about what's going on. It takes responsibility if you watch the first one to the second one to the third one, right? And comes in and says, okay, I have to do this for the family. Yeah, it's about family. That's what I keep. It's about family. And then all of a sudden he becomes this guy who keeps making tough decisions, not because he likes it. This is not... Because sometimes people will come... Because at the same era, I think maybe Scarface came out maybe a little bit later or the same era kind of era. But like this movie is different. Because see, in this movie, he's actually portraying and saying like, "Hey, I'm still making tough decisions because of the family and because of who I am, not because of, because I want to or because I ha- it's because I have to." And I and I keep doing this. You know, it's a lot of people who don't understand this. You know, and I understand this as a big brother as the things I've done in my life and proved it. Not to say it. You know, other people can say like whatever they want to say. Like, no, I've proved it and saying like, "Hey, I'm willing to do this for my family and I'm willing to take this loss and like, ah, oh, whatever." And, they, whatever they want to say, they say it. Or like I've done this before, so that's what I keep from the, from that movie. That's why I'm like, this is kind of the the substance yeah. of it. I think I recently watched The Lion King with my son, and that'll that'll get you a little misty eyed. Right? You want to hear something that's going to throw you off? So I saw this online now. I don't know if it's true, but I saw this online, and this would be so messed up if it's true. So so supposedly. Uh, it's the scene, you know, with Scar, that's all the Mufasa, and Mufasa falls down, yeah, yeah. et cetera. So now they're saying they're going to come out with the other versions of it, showing the origin of Scar and what actually happened. Yeah. That Scar was actually uh, the son and that Mufasa was adopted, supposedly. And and while Mufasa was adopted, was Scar was his right to be... You know the leader. They're gonna, you're gonna make Scar that. a sympathetic character. Yeah, they're gonna make Scar a yeah. sympathetic character. And all this, I was like, you can't. You gotta be joking right now. This My is whole what happened. Life. Do you know the play that's <laughs> the famous musical Wicked? That you didn't even know that play at all. It's been on Broadway and in, in London for twenty years. You know, you saw the Wizard of Oz. Yes. That that show Wicked is about how the Wicked Witch of the West really wasn't bad, and that um, she was really a good person. She got tricked into, I don't know the whole story, but anyway, that's the same. Another perspective, the same concept. I love the same yeah, concept yes. and all this, and he was adopted, and now he was supposed to be the the leader, et cetera. And then um, Fonse came, and then his dad was like, his dad was telling him in the movie. Supposedly, his dad is telling him like, no, we don't want Mufasa with us. He's we don't want him with us. And Scott is advocating and saying no. He doesn't have anybody, and blah, 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 and then this happened, and then Mufasa became this guy. Well, you know, the then... story of the lion is a sad story. The, the, like, the life cycle of a, of, a, of a lion is a sad story. Tell me. Well, what happens with lions is, um, you know, you grow up, and then you, you know, if you're the male, 
you have to try to like kill your brother or your father to take over the pride. Yeah. And then like when that happens, if you don't kill them, like um, if you get too old or whatever, they just push you out of the pride and you, you're too old and you can't hunt or whatever, or you're injured or whatever. And then you're on your own and like, you, you just perish then basically. Yes. You get, yeah. Like the story of the lion is a, is a brutal story. It's kind of like, Frank, like the story of the NBA. I know that this is, <laughs> no, oh, I, I love how have we you ever go been on, back to the, have you ever been on the safari? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you ever go on safari and you see the way lions are, you know, like there's a pride and the lionesses like do the hunting. Okay. You know, they do the hunting for the, but you know, there's, you know, like, if you go see a pride of lions, like, and you see the, the, the alpha male who's in charge, like there's like, and they're cubs, you know, like their sons, like someday their sons will rise up and push out the father. Like that's going to happen, you know, which is why sometimes yeah. they kill them yes. <laughs> if they're boys. But, um, like it is a sad story. And so I always think of this one time cause this was going on while I was covering the Miami heat. And this also made me think of like Shaq and Kobe. So like, I remember one time, the first time I ever went on safari, we went and I saw this pride of lions and this pride of lions was unusual. It had two heads, two, there were two brothers who yeah. were the heads of the, of the, um, of the, of the pride. And this was very unusual. Typically there would only be one. And so the people who were at, were there who worked the Savannah, you know, I remember it was, it was in South Africa yeah. and this guy, um, his, the name, his name was twice. He was our guide. He'd say, twice? twice. He'd say twice, two times. That's what he said. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I say, I said to him, is this is, this is unusual. There'd be two, two lions. And he says, he goes, yeah, he goes, I go, will this last, you know, can, can they, can they rule together? Can they rule the pride together? Or will one turn on the other? He goes, I don't know. We'll see. It could go either way. Maybe they'll rule for many years. Maybe one will turn on the other. And push the other one out. And I think of this all the time in the NBA because an NBA team in a lot of ways like a pride, like a pride of love. And they all, oh, and then you get the example of Shaq and Kobe. Just well, because. I was thinking about Shaq and Kobe and I was thinking about Le LeBron and Wade and I was thinking about LeBron and Kyrie. Like this is, this is when I was doing this. Like, you know, like in a lot of ways, you know, to be a great NBA team, you have to have like that one star, right? And yeah, everybody supports them. Yeah, 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 that's true. You know? That's true. I, I, I agree. I, but I think to me, this is this is why I love the Spurs. I don't know, I don't know how we went end up again with basketball, but we did. This is why I love the Spurs, just because of obviously Tim Duggan. I, I don't need to say it. I mean, we all know, but at the same time, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, just the. I don't think any of them didn't think they were. They were. I think they all thought they they are the leader, but at the same time, they all thought like I need to get him where I need to get him, and he needs to get me where I need to be. But it did have a bit of a sad thing with Kawhi, like you know he. Yeah, Kawhi was different. Right? Well, it's like different. it could, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's which, which is, which is crazy to me. You know, I'll, this is the examples where I give. You know, sometimes I like I'll do like uh, mentoring, um, depending on the schedule and stuff. Like I'll do mentoring to some kids and NBA, and etc. And they will say like, "Oh, you know, I want, I want to come to the league." And you know, the first thing I say, "Ah, oh, let's let's work out." And they walk out and they start like, you know, working on the shooting and working on the, you know, not they don't work on the body, they don't work on the attitude, no nothing. And I go like, "Ah, oh, guys, I don't, I don't know." And they go like, "Why?" I said because. You're not look. You're not looking at the cycle in the NBA. What you're looking at is, is now. It's like the young kids and who, but you're not looking at the guys who have stayed and actually played. And and they go like, what do you mean? I said, for instance, what did they do when they first got in? Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler used to be the defender for Daddy Cross, Taj Gibson, Joey Kim. No, all these guys. He used to be like, hey, young young blood, go defend for us. Go stop stop these guys so we can score. Blah 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 blah. Now he's Jimmy Butler. Right? Kawhi Leonard. Who was Kawhi Leonard? It was like, hey, go stop Braun from scoring for us to do this, to do this, to do this. Who is not Kawhi? Kawhi Leonard now all of a sudden is one of the best two-way players in, in, in that league. So I don't think they see the progression. They just see like, oh, look at this guy shoot from 20 feet. Great. But look at the consistent guys, guys who have built their way up into this league. That's one tier. Look at the other guys who are came here for a niche and know exactly what, what they are. Wesley Matthews, Jay Crowder, all, all these guys who, who by, the, by the way, they all went to market. No pun intended. All of them went to market. But I'm saying, it's it's a thing. Market produces top of guys, right? So about playing defense, 
in Nice because there is it's the it's the metrics of people, right? They go and they say, okay, uh, okay, Nick and Kevin, you both can shoot, but Kevin is a better shooter. You both can defend, but uh, Nick is a better defender. You both can uh, let's say dribble, but Nick is a better uh, dribble, dribble uh, let's say ball handler. Uh, you both can uh, communicate in the locker room, but Nick is a better communicator. So they will pick Nick. They will. It doesn't matter how you shoot. It doesn't matter how you score. It just doesn't because it's all, it's all about the group. That's what we need. It's all about the group and quote-unquote it's all about the group. The only time it's not all about the group is when they're about to pick a superstar. Everybody else, it's all about the group. Trust me. They, they, we don't need you to score 25 if we got the name. We got, we got somebody who can score 30. We be straight. We have two guys who can score 65, actually. Two. Not not five team. Two guys. <laughs> Six right there. Right, that's you right. know what I mean? Yeah. So, or they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm a big. I can shoot. I'm like, we already have Brook Lopez. Show me something. Can you have young legs? Can you move around? Can you block shots? Can you can you get the rebound and push it and go, like, pick up, pick uh, Dame on the half court or pick, you know, uh, or Giannis. You defend it. You cover Giannis's back if uh, he's, he's out in the perimeter, all the things like this. Because I don't want you to shoot from full court, which I would love for you, but it's just a bonus for me. Professionalism, def how do you defend, and how do I pick you to come here and help us right away? Because what you said too, as well, the young players. <laughs> you, now I don't want to quote any quotes because it's gonna look weird, it's gonna look awkward. But like, it's a thing. It's hard in a team that's competing. It's hard if it's in, a team is not competing. Take the ball, roll it on the floor, and go play. And let me admire you. Oh, 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 all these things, you know. So it, it's it's very hard, very very hard. And and you said the, the pride, the pride is, uh, you know, it's all about the falling place. And and we follow, we all follow what what is it? Is it a pride? Is it a wolf pack? Is there whatever you want to call it? But this is this is the other thing about like the new, not the new generation, because it, it sounds like I'm very very old. <laughs> which is okay, but I'm not. But it's more of how can we cultivate this into, you say about the media, we try to give them advice and say the, story, the storytelling, all these things. And how can we get these guys to be able to come play for the Bucks, be able to come play for the Lakers, the Knicks, the, the any team, and say, hey, I know that you think it's, it's fancy. I know You're supposed to, you know, what, you know what should be in a PSA sign or in a sign? You're supposed to know how to do that. It's not like, oh, you know, I, I can I can really dribble and, and and shoot from half court. It's the NBA. It's okay. It's a lot of people that do that. What I need you to do is not get scored on. Can you do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can you rebound? Yes. You know? But uh, I really appreciate that. You know, I really appreciate that, uh, Mr. Brian. And thank you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thank uh, you very much. Good you. luck to you. Thank, we'll see you th soon. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon because I would love... For you obviously, you know, I won't ask on camera, so he won't say no. Uh, to have you on maybe February or the All Star, do a segment with me, sure, or the All Star game yeah, or something because sure. yeah, I yeah. know it's it's hard, I know it's so hard. But uh, first of all, forget about the segment, I would love you to just come visit Greece, man. Come to Greece, I would, I've never been to Greece. Come I've to Greece, we'd love to have, have world, you anytime. I I'd love to go, come to Greece, I'd love to go. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, this is we're across the SPN here, yeah, right like here this is this yeah. is. It's amazing for you to, uh, for us to have you on the show, and uh, uh, but before we go, what's, uh, what's who's going to be your MVP this year? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you guys. We'll come to another end of the show, Tanali's show. You guys have been amazing. Thank you guys for listening, watching. Uh, please follow Mr. Brian. All his socials, uh, Twitter or X, uh, Instagram, etc. I think whatever you find him, follow Mr. Brian. Uh, Follow his stories. He's amazing. Follow his, follow his analysis. He's amazing. And um, please, please, please uh, go like, share, subscribe. We're going to give a huge thank you to our sponsors, Car Bliss, uh, Gruber Law, which is presented, analysis is presented by Gruber Law, and uh, Potawatomi Casinos and Hotels. You guys have been amazing. Analysis, out. Oh.